Underwriting support for this program is provided by the Eureka Teachers Association's School Board Liaison, Philip Middlemiss. Thank you. May 16th, and um, going straight to public comment on, well, closed session will be at the end of the month. Can't really hear. Are you on? I am now. Do we still have public comment on closed session, even if it's at the end? What needs to be up? Do we still have public comments? Closed session items? Closed session is that? <coughs> um, so, report out from close, half closed session. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. We can't hear you. It's not, it's not working. That's my mic. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Nobody's on. Uh oh. No, uh oh. Uh -oh. Somebody pulled our plug. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. Yeah. Our soap's back there. <laughs> Should we move up closer? <laughs> <laughs> we can. You know, I don't need a mic. Yeah, he's in front of the class. <laughs> so I guess we'll have to just speak loud. Yes. Um, Pledge of Allegiance, Hank, if you'll lead us. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? We have no adjustments to the agenda. Information, student reports. <coughs> I'm Lauren Graven, the school board rep for the REG FFA. I'm visiting you on my birthday. <laughs> oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Um, last month I wasn't able to attend because I was out of town for both for educational reasons. Um, so I'll be reporting on last month and this month. On the 4th of last month we had an officer meeting and we were gone for spring break. And then on the 18th we turned and had an FFA meeting. It was a fear factor theme. We left for state conference, Kelly and I, for our state speaking contest. We were both in the top 24 of our state and I participated in prompt two speaking and she participated in job interview. 
then throughout the state conference, we had about 13 members attend and get le like le sorry leadership skills and abilities and went to leadership activities. We also had conferences and listened to retiring addresses and helped install new members. And we also had judging teams that month and meets was their last contest. They placed in probably 13th where it's a hard contest. <laughs> and then we had other teams we placed in probably top six or seven of all of our teams out of the state. And we also, on the 29th, we had our Kiwanis breakfast that we volunteered at. We had nine members volunteer there. And we were generously donated as we left because we had such great service. <laughs> <laughs> and then this month in May, on the 2nd, we had our officer meeting. On the 3rd, we had tri-tip lunches. So at our officer meeting, we bagged about 150 sandwiches and then sold them and hand them out on the 3rd. We left for Cal Poly on the 3rd and got back on the 6th. We That was our state finals, and we all placed above in the top 15. And there's probably 30 teams for each, um, like, contest. And wow. there's, I think, 70 contests in the entire, like, division of FFA, CDE teams, career development teams. So we did pretty good. And then... On the 16th, we are have, actually, I'm oh, sorry, on the 7th, we had our officer applications due, and on the 8th, we had officer interviews. So right now, tonight, we're having our officer speeches where our FFA team and members are voting on the new elected officers. And so we had about 14 interview and 12 made the slate. So we'll be listening to those tonight. And on the 22nd, we had Give Youth a Hand. Well, this month we will be having it, where we will have a booth. And then on the 23rd, we're having our FFA school fair. We were advocating for agriculture and the different, like, different industries in the agriculture industry. So if you guys want to attend that, we will be having 614 students come and check out our facility, which is quite a lot. We had to raise money for the buses in order to get our students in elementary students and middle school students to come and be able to see what we have to offer. And that's pretty much it. And then next month, we are having our FFA banquet. It's our awards banquet that we have the end of the month. So if you guys want to attend that. And this month, this week end, on the 19th, we're having Mr. Smith's retirement a party. So that's out in Ferndale at the Peace Officers Hall. And it's from four to seven. So if you guys would like to attend, wear your best Hawaiian shirt and <laughs> come and attend and see what's going on. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm Erin Knight, and I'm senior class president. And I'm Katherine McGibbon, ASB president, and we're from Eureka High Student Government. This week, starting on, well, next week, but it starts this Friday, is the academic fair at Eureka High. And each day there's dress up days. And this year, the marketing plan that I talked to you guys before about, we got the entire thing paid for off of donations from our community so we got all the t-shirts and everything the community helped out with that and on Tuesday is the actual academic fair and the campus all wears college sweatshirts and each of the clubs has a booth down Main Street and you guys are welcome to walk around and check everything out and then on Thursday is our powder puff game which is where the seniors and the juniors play against each other with the guy cheerleaders and then First. also no also okay. we have, <laughs> also we're in the middle of our elections and we've done the general election so we have all the elected positions taken care of but we are currently doing the commissionership so like rally and athletics and FFA everyone is interviewing for those right now okay and then for seniors we have our senior picnic which is on June 1st and the location is undeclared and the senior class bought a t-shirt for every single student that will be there and we're going to tie-dye them. And then the next day on June 2nd is senior prom which is at the River Lodge and if any of you would like to stop by and check it out that would be great. Thank you. 
Thank you. Hi, I'm Delia Haynes and this is Sarah Hale and we did our senior project together which was the Time Travelers Club. Time Travelers Club we did it, at, it's an after school program club at Lafayette after school. Uh, we did it for once a week for two months and the idea behind it was to take one thing that happened that day in history and do an activity with it with the kids fourth through sixth grade. We had two separate groups because we did um, two months, one group one month and one group another month. We did things like um, on the birth of the guy who uh, came up with Monopoly, we made Monopoly boards. <laughs> <laughs> on the day of the Canadian flag was ratified, we ma had the children make their own flags. And then we played you know, card games and had them play war and then they were, it was a battle between them to earn each other's countries, which was fun for them. Uh, we did lots of different activities like that. <laughs> Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other student reports? Superintendent's report. I just wanted to say that I got to go to the Eureka High School play, um, that they did the little scenario or partial skit at the last board meeting. It was absolutely phenomenal. I actually ended up going to it twice. It was so darn good. Um, so that was incredibly in enjoyable as usual. I was going to talk about the events at Eureka High, but I think you guys have a pretty good understanding that there is a lot of things happening throughout our district, um, you know, anywhere from different types of open houses, spring, spring events to um, academic fairs, FFA. It's just a very, very busy time of year for our schools and our students, um, including this weekend is a Relay for Life at Eureka High School, and that's always been a phenomenal event as well. That'll be all for superintendent's report. Great. Board member re reports, Wendy. Um, I was gone the entire week last week at the annual state PTA convention in Anaheim. And yes, I did go to Disneyland for four hours on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in my work is saying, oh, you went to Disneyland for the week. Okay, so um, lots of... Im Incredible information. The workshops are great. This is a working trip for me as I am currently serving on the board of managers for the state PTA. Um, and they worked us a lot, but it never fails. I've been to four conventions now. It never fails to rejuvenate me and refocus me on absolutely we're in it for the kids. And I come back a little tired but refreshed and um, great information coming out of the state PTA. They're working on legislative action items, they're working on community concern items, they're big on, on anti-bullying and suicide prevention projects. Um, if you want to get into something, you know, check out the CAPTA, California PTA website, CAPTA.org, and click on any of those links and find out the commissions that are going on and, and get involved. And that's it for me. Hank? Yes, uh, the day after our last meeting, I drove to Visalia to a master's in governance program from uh, California School Boards Association. And in order to save the district money, I took my fifth wheel and was forced to go up to Yosemite to follow that up. I didn't want to waste the time down there. And uh, I bring warm regards from Jim Scott, who I met in the uh, gallery, the Ansel Adams Gallery in Yosemite the day before his birthday. So warmest regards and hello from Jim. Um, on kind of a, uh, the other side of that is we lost a, a long-term member of the Eureka family recently. Gordon Meyer was a custodian forever with our district and he passed away suddenly. And uh, I knew him well and uh, we'll all miss him because he was a great guy. Frank? <clears throat> well, I had one of the most exciting experiences of my life this last week and it actually was fun. Uh, I went to Carson Park with between 250 and 300 seventh graders <laughs> from Zane. And we walked, or they walked, I drove my car, because I was supposed to take some equipment and th things. And they walked down Boone Street and arrived at the park, and it was an abs. of course it was a gorgeous, gorgeous day. It was absolutely wonderful. 
the kids were just great and you, I can't I can't give Trevor uh, Hammonds who is the new counselor there enough credit he had it so well organized nobody was goofing off the kids we were there until close to 1130 uh, all I had to do was every once in a while a, a child would come up and ask me to sign because they ha had these little passports and they had to they had to go from different activities to give different activities although one boy played football with Garrett my Montana the entire time <laughs> and I said it was okay because he was really active but they had tug of war they had soccer they had football they had wiffle ball they had they even they even were on those uh, dragons and uh, where the little kids like to go and <laughs> swings and th they just had a wonderful time and they were so well behaved I, I did follow them home because I thought they'll start goofing off on the way home and they didn't I think they were tired on the way home <laughs> to be truthful but it was a very 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 good experience I was I, I'm glad I went I'm so glad I wasn't in charge of it but I'm glad <laughs> <I did. laughs> Susan um, I attended the uh, Alice Bernie uh, bicycle rodeo and um, it was really sweet the after and the dedication of the the kids that had been in the bike club for the whole year and worked really hard on their bicycles and um, as you all know that those weren't the bicycles they ended up taking home they, they were stolen and others were donated but they all were were given their bicycle and and um, gave some very heartfelt mm -hmm. little speeches and it um, one of them actually brought, brought tears to quite a few, a few of our eyes there it was very sweet and um, I enjoyed that a lot and that's it for me okay Okay, uh, next is public comment on non-agenda items. This is the time designated on the agenda when members of the public may bring before the board matters that are not listed on the agenda. Legally, no action or significant discussion can take place about a matter not listed on the agenda. Therefore, board members and district staff members usually will not respond to public comments. The reason for this is the Brown Act. No di significant discussion can take place on an issue that has not been properly noticed to the public. As printed on the agenda, individual speakers will have three minutes to address the board. Each topic is limited to 20 minutes total. So as I call your name, if you'll come up to the podium, and when you start, the light will be green. When you have one minute left, it will be yellow. And when your time's up, it'll be turn red. And if you'll uh, please end your uh, speech at that point. And I have a number of green slips. Uh, first one is for Lori Dutra. Back again. Hi. <laughs> I'm Lori Dutra, and I'm here representing all the past, present, future Eureka City Schools Cal Safe teen parent families and Eureka City Schools infant toddler families. Um, we have given you background information on our programs, our funding, who we serve, why we serve them, what benefits they receive, the success stories, statistics, numbers. We've given you information on the agencies we've worked with and continue to work with in the community and the links of our support services to the community and future Eureka City Schools clientele. And the list goes on. But now I just want to give you a current update as of today, May 16th, 2012. Our numbers are continuing to ascend. We have another enrolled student receiving case management service for this year, upping the um, number to 17 teen parents. And then we also had um, a community <coughs> parent calling today about possible services um, for his child and baby. So the number is inclining, you know, unfortunately. Um, we are also continuing the incline of our community paying um, clientele, the enrollment of infants and toddlers and their families, um, having another baby just starting last Friday. The CalSafe babies who have received child care this year is at four, and the community paying families being served this year um, is currently at eight. The projection for the 2012-2013 school year is as follows. Our CalSafe students as of today will be six, and each of these students desperately needs childcare next year, um, and they really do. 
as well as the support services guidance and outreach our program provides for them. The students represent, these six students will represent $31,320 in ADA, if that's how you need to look at it, you know, in a business aspect. Um, because if they don't have childcare, I don't know if they'll be Eureka City Schools clients next year. I really don't. And we also have eight community clients, and that means paying clients who need child care next year for three to five days a week at $37 to $59 per day per child for the 180 school days we are in operation. So these are the figures. Uh, this is the current income that will be brought in for the 2012-2013 school year from our program beyond the 51500 annual CalSAFE grant and other community resources grants, such as through First Five Humboldt that we receive. And I also would like to invite you, the board, to our annual Young Parent Conference, which is funded through First Five Humboldt, and it will be held at the First United Methodist Church, which is on F and Del Norte on May 24th from 4.30 to 8. And it looks like this year we will be having workshops on such topics as car seat safety, nutrition, resume, job search, parenting information, and even possibly storytelling. So I'm just going to leave a couple of the sheets, just a couple, that we had given our team parents this year. So we would really like to invite you. Thanks. Pam Cahill. I could hang on to it because I want to go. Hi again, I'm Pam Cahill and I uh, started the Teen Parent Program and I just have some new statistics that I wanted to give you to help you think a little bit more about it. When I started it, um, the, one of the main reasons is because the teen parents are being shuffled off into independent study or just dropping out and these mothers who were oftentimes very good students were not getting an education. So we ended up uh, reaching almost all the teen parents uh, and as 20 years is going by we look now and we find that last year 2011 there were um, 58 births in teen parents 32 percent of that was in each, uh, Eureka City Schools District 22 babies and moms should be served at Eureka City Schools and we served maybe six. So there's something wrong, and I heard somebody in the board say, oh, well, they can just take independent study. Well, independent study is one hour a week. How can you get an education? How can you go to college? How can you become a doctor? How can you become a teacher when you're getting one day a week of education? Something is wrong. These teen moms, just because they got pregnant, are not stupid. They're not dumb. They're not a problem. They shouldn't be shuffled off to community school. They shouldn't be in independent study. We used to take the girls after home hospital and put them right back in school, both continuation and the comprehensive, and we had many of them there. I think Eureka City Schools is becoming regressive instead of progressive when it comes to women and women's issues and that is really sad. I think you really need to reconsider this program and I know you've already voted no but I think you need to reconsider for the children's sake because these moms when you educate them their children become educated and they break the cycle of teen parent dropout, teen parent dropout, generation after generation. And that's what we found, and now it's going back to before we started the program. So I encourage you to think about that. I encourage you to keep those statistics in mind. If every year there are 22 girls getting pregnant in your district, what are you doing for them? You're not educating them. That's it. Brandy Skates. Okay. 
Sativa Daniels. Hi again, it's me. <laughs> I'm back. I was just wanting to let you guys know that <clears throat> I myself am a product of Eureka City Schools and I met many great teachers and staff along the way. My husband and I met in high school and we had bought our house in the area so that our kids would go to the same schools that we went to and loved. Since that time, many changes have been put into place and some have been reversed within a year or two. <clears throat> By constantly changing things without thinking of the kids is creating holes for our most needy kids to fall through. There are kids that are going to be left behind because of the lack of consistency. For kindergarten, my son had one principal, and for this year, he's had another. And when I compare the two years, I must be honest and say that first, safety, consistency, and care have been thought of this year. For example, our playground is a lot safer, and I haven't had to make a trip to the hospital for a head injury that required stitches. Our kids, now more than ever, need to come back next year and see some familiar faces. The majority of our community's kids, the kids that you all are here to serve, are not getting the care and support that they need to succeed on a daily basis from all areas. With so much changing in our community, and some of which is out of our hands, we look to you and expect from you to see the consistency and dedication in the areas that you've been put in the position to make. Also, it's human nature, in my opinion, to feel many different emotions when being met with discontent towards oneself from others. And I believe that those same feelings, unfortunately, will carry over into our school if this change occurs. I feel that no longer would my son's school be a place where the kids come first and our parents, volunteers, and other staff feel appreciated and comfortable. Neither will we see progress in programs and other supports that have been put into place this year to support our kids. And I just wanted to ask you to please take all of these facts into account and listen to all of the parents that are coming forward to speak about this matter when you're making your final decision in regards to taking principals and switching them around. We want to keep our principal at Grant. We appreciate her efforts and we see them. Thank you. Cuteria. Everybody started by saying we're, we're here again, so I guess I'm here again. I'm Gateria Pereira. I'm a math teacher at Zane. Some people might think that teachers paying $61 per month for health benefits is nothing to stand up for. But I realize that some people don't understand what that $61 means. It means that teachers are worth less today than they were in January. And in January, we already were worth less because of inflation. But it may be argued that ECS is in the same boat. They, too, are getting less and paying more. So let's compare. ETA's benefit increase amounts to around 0.2% of the e total ECS budget. For the average teacher, benefit increase is around 1.5% of their total home budget, which is about seven, over seven times as much. Now I'm going to go on a side here. Many of us are being squeezed between a rock and a hard place. Many of us are expected to work more for less and pay more for less. But we don't have to agree to that. Money hasn't disappeared. We have been made to believe that but listen to the numbers used around you. For example, J.P. Morgan Chase described their $2 billion loss insignificant in comparison to their profits, or the fact that the movie Avengers made $200 million this last weekend, or the fact that Tiger Woods, having won only one tournament in the last two years, made $50 million in the past 12 months. Money has been shifted away from the public good 
to the private greed and education has been severely affected by that shift. Education is about the American dream and the pursuit of happiness. Teachers invested money into their education with the expectation of a return on that investment. If we can't afford to eat out, drive a decent car, go on vacation, buy a house, pay for health care, and receive a pension at retirement, all part of the American dream, why should our students work hard in school? Given that we live in Humboldt County, they would choose the other way to make money where an education isn't necessary. As educators, we must value ourselves or we risk, risk, risk leaving our students without a middle class future. We must demand that we are worth more today, not less. And the board of ECS, should also protect education by valuing its educators. If you devalue us, you devalue our students' education. And lastly, this community should value education by insisting on shifting money from the private hands to public stewards. The community can do this by voting in November to increase taxes to what they were 20 years ago. Taxes are how our schools are paid for. Taxes are how we give our grandkids a better tomorrow. We are ETA. Craig Parker. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Craig Parker. I'm a teacher at Eureka High School and ETA High School Director. Well, here we are again, on another super busy Wednesday evening. Although all of us have schoolwork, family plans, and other important obligations, we are the ETA and we are here to show the school board that we are in complete solidarity with our bargaining team's efforts in support of our contract. I would also like to welcome our new superintendent, Mr. Van Vleck, who I think I saw uh, today. Just to let you know, we are the ETA, and we'll be here to say howdy on a regular basis. When pondering the relationship with the new superintendent, I have to pause and reflect on the prudent words of the wise sage and astute philosopher, Pete Townsend. <laughs> Is it going to be meet the new boss, same as the old boss? Just to let you know, we have a long way to go to heal some of the trauma created by your predecessors in the bargaining process. From all of what's been said and heard, it sounds like this hiring is a step in the right direction. Board members, we have a few key issues that need to be addressed this evening. First, we demand that the bargaining process, thereby our members, be treated with respect and dignity. No more recreating an entire contract from thin air and demand that it be accepted. No more hiring an outside bargaining agent that is costing the district thousands of dollars and has no real interest in the bargaining process. No more holding the bargaining process hostage for arbitrary reasons, thereby forcing our members to take a substantial pay cut. No more denying that our working conditions are our students' learning conditions as well. Next, board members. The district must return to the fully funded benefits package that ECS had provided for over two decades. There are many creative and actually quite simple ways to manipulate the benefits package within CISC that could have avoided the additional cost to each ET member and the stress in the bargaining process. Not one of the alternates was considered by the previous superintendent pardon me, current superintendent, an overly lavish, costly, expensive, and superfluous bargaining agent. As a result, this year, every single one of our members has taken at least a $700 pay cut. Yes, a pay cut that will prevent a member from being able to take a plane flight to visit an ailing family member. A pay cut that will prevent a member from getting his or her dependent child a second round of much-needed orthodontia. A pay cut that will prevent a member from purchasing additional materials that she or he traditionally provides for students to use in the classroom. A pay cut that is completely unheard of and unnecessary in the district's current financial status. Board members, do the right thing and direct the superintendent to return to the bargaining table and reinstate a fully paid benefits package. Finally, board members, get involved in your district. It is your job to get out and visit your sites. Discover how dedicated, active, and involved your teachers are. Sit in on your staff and site council meetings. Attend music, drama, athletic, and other extracurricular activities and events that are directed and supervised by your staff of your various schools. Talk to your teachers. Nothing prevents you from doing that. Find out what is happening in their classrooms in order to develop your own understanding of your teachers' daily working conditions. Talk to your union leaders. Hear the various concerns of the sites and the site reps and the rep council. Seek out your own information. Have something new to report about our working conditions to your fellow board members at the start of the next board meeting. Please, please do not just listen to the superintendent and his administrative team. Ask questions, investigate, get out, do your own home homework, find out for yourselves, and it's all hope we won't get fooled again. We are the ETA. 
Thank you. Philip Middlemas. Good evening. I'm Philip Middlemas, uh, ETA School Board Liaison and Eureka High School Co-Chair of the English Department. Paul Bursu, the ETA organizer, asked me to say a few words on his behalf because he's unable to appear here tonight due to his son's Arcata baseball team playing Eureka High's baseball team. It's their final league game and if you know Paul like I know Paul, his concept of team is often equated with passion and family. And plus he's the game's announcer. <laughs> <laughs> I support my bargaining team because I'm a professional educator and because my team honors me with shared respect. I support my bargaining team because I choose to be represented by those who understand that because of the job I do, I am worth more not less, as shown by this board that so far has agreed to cut my total compensation. I support my bargaining team because they believe that our contract and working conditions are good for students instead of a board that leans toward cutting school, cutting days, and raising class size to balance the ECS budget. I support my bargaining team because they believe that cuts should be made as far from the classroom as possible instead of balancing the budget on the workers' backs. I support, support my bargaining team because they are local volunteers. I know them. I have worked side by side with them for over 20 years. They care about the district, about the students, about their profession. And I detest, detest the idea of some hired lawyer from a big city who has no history or investment in our community brought in because the board leadership is hostile toward our association. I support our bargaining team because I believe they see the big picture, always have, and don't allow themselves to be influenced by the drumming of fear and worst case scenario. I support our bargaining team because they are Eureka Teacher Association and because together we are ETA. Thank you. Carol Rose. Good evening, and I'm here once again as well. Um, as you know, I'm Carol Rose. I have a student who goes to Grant Elementary School, and we're not going to give up trying to keep our principal at Grant. I hope the board members will take a second vote and this time vote with the parents and the teachers to let Tracy stay at Grant. Tracy has made significant improvements at Grant School and has created a family-friendly atmosphere based on parent, teacher, and child cooperation. Tracy has fostered a community-based environment that is so desperately needed in helping today's children achieve academic su success. Children at Grant are now more comfortable with their roles and have taken positive outlook on learning. Parents can now regularly talk with the teachers before and after school to give children the extra help they may need. This has made a positive difference and test scores throughout the schools. One of the major concerns at Grant has always been the pick up and drop off of students. Under Tracy's guidance, this issue has been significantly reduced and most often pick up can now be completed within six to eight minutes of the final bell. Morning drop off has been dramatically improved as well with parents pulling as far forward as they can to allow a better traffic flow. <clears throat> Tracy Kearns is exactly what Grant Elementary has needed, and as you can see,
by the 200 signatures that you're going to be receiving tonight that the parents of the children attending grant agree. Education is not just the job of the school. It's a community effort that needs the cooperation of teachers, administrators, parents, and children. And this is exactly what Tracy has built at Grant. So we know that you guys have already voted once to um, agree to the shuffle of principals all around and such. But I really urge you to reconsider it. it not just for Grant, but um, I understand you're going to be hearing from Alice Burney and Lafayette as well. So if you can just take a minute to just rehear it, you know? If your mind's made up and nothing's gonna sway you, that's one thing. But if you talk to the parents, with 200 signatures, just parents, and we don't have um, a large student body at Grant. If parents are trying to tell the school board, this is what's helping our children at Grant we'd like for you to take a few minutes of your time. You know, come on out to the place. See, we're friendly out there. We're comfortable out there. Everything's working smooth. Teachers, parents. So just a couple minutes of your time. Think about it at least. Thank you. promised uh, last week I brought the petition that we have put forward to the teacher or to the parents at Grant Elementary we have achieved 200 signatures uh, which is considering our student body is only about 300 students this comprises the majority of the parents at Grant um, I'd like to read for you exactly what we're trying to say with this petition. We, the parents, grandparents, and relatives that have children attending Grant Elementary School petition the Eureka City School Board to keep Tracy Kern, the principal of Grant Elementary School, as the principal of Grant Elementary School, or, excuse me, sorry, lost my place, uh, due to Tracy's dedication, increased parent-teacher involvement, and communication, increased testing scores, and problem-solving skills she has brought to Grant Elementary over the 2011-2012 school year. Tracy has done, demonstrated a resolve to help the children and their families along with the school needs. We, the parents, grandparents, and relatives feel moving Tracy Kern out of Grant Elementary would be detrimental to the success and academic momentum of the students, the teachers, and families that have come to depend on, on her inspiration and guidance. So I formally would like to present you with 10 copies of the petition to keep Tracy Kern at Grant Elementary School. Thank you very much. Jennifer Toolman. 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 I just recently found out that they were going to change our principal, Miss P. With, we call her Miss P. <laughs> she has been with us for I think about four years now, three or four years, four years. I've been in the district for. Um, Eureka City Schools for over 10 years because and my child went to their, my oldest one went there through kindergarten. Since then, we've had four different principals. Some of them have taken away student council. Some have changed lots of different things. Mrs. P, as we call her, has put in an effort to get to know the families, to help 
is mimics in the community have started the bike helped support the bike club brought back student council to our school has really done a lot for our school and um, some of the past principals they've done a lot but some haven't done anything um, and I um, am a very involved parent for my children's education I have advocated I have five children in your district I personally have graduated and went to Eureka City Schools and I am very very disappointed in the district of changing a principles again if we've always been taught if something's not broken don't fix it there's nothing broken don't fix it the principal has really put an effort in our schools and same with the other schools I personally I'm very disappointed in the district for taking and changing things. I find out that they're changing my son's principal at Zane. It's, and, and when I was in high school, they changed it through three, three principals when I was in high school. So it's really shuffling principals doesn't help. It doesn't get the students through school to get to know their principals. Let them go through some some at least five or six years spend time there getting to know the students the principals that have been at schools that have been there longer have got to know families have really changed families lives i just um, would like to say that i would like us to see mrs pizzel in our i mean mrs p in our priscilla in our school and i'd like her to stay and many alice bernie no i don't think we've had a petition because not we didn't know most of the parents didn't even know that they were changing and if there was we would have almost all of them to sign it because it's very disappointing to know that you would change something that's not broken thank you and that concludes our public comment on non-agenda items I speak also. I uh, uh, I didn't sign up, but it says in the green form that I don't have to sign up. Yeah, and go ahead. Come to the podium, um, please. I am not back. This is my first time. Buenas noches, damas y caballeros. Yo me llamo Rafael Rivera Chavez. He enseñado en Eureka High School desde hace ya 18 años este año. Y aunque me preocupa mucho la situación con la con el, um, el cobro en cuanto al seguro médico, no, no, quiero ya, no quiero hablar de eso ahora. Quiero hablar acerca de la falta de comunicación con los padres de familia, con las familias que son de habla hispana. Hace más o menos cinco años perdimos a la persona que, que se encargaba de traducir, que escribía cartas a las familias de habla hispana y aún la persona no ha sido reemplazada. Hace años ya la señora Carmen Alexander trabajó en la, en la oficina de consejeros y ella era quien recibía las llamadas por teléfono de los padres que hablaban español, que no hablaban inglés. Y me doy cuenta que ya la señora Alexander se ha jubilado en, en, en um, circunstancias um, cuestionables de mi punto de vista. Y me gustaría animar a la mesa uh, directiva de la escuela del distrito de Eureka a contratar a una persona para trabajar en Eureka High School para poderse comunicar con los padres de familia de habla hispana. Um, I guess if I'm speaking in two languages, I should get six minutes. Um, <laughs> time is never, time, minutes, minutes really have never been one of my concerns, but I hope that I have communicated an idea just simply by addressing the board respectfully, I, I, I do hope you understand, in a different language. It is incredibly difficult for me to, memor to remember in 1976 when I came to the United States and my three-year-old brother, well, at first it was myself. I happened to learn English rather, rather quickly. Uh, but then after I moved, my 10-year-old brother having to translate for my parents with insurance a agencies, with hospitals, with clinics, with the school, because the school was not providing a translator 
at the time. And at that time, migrant education and bilingual education was the law in California. Nowadays, that's not the law. I hope, I hope you forgive me for not translating everything I said. But I, I, I hope that I'm making a point that there's a need that by not having someone at the, at the school who can talk with parents, we are disregarding their needs. And as a school, we can't do that. Today, tomorrow we're supposed to have an ELAC meeting at the high school. We're having, a, we're having a, um, parents come to, our, to, to visit our school, I hope. Today I spent two hours on the telephone talking with parents because I, I, I asked an employee of the district, I asked Jackie, who, who, was, who was the, uh, um, the um, interpreter of the district? And she came and she says, well, it said that it's you and another person <laughs> at, the, at, a, at a different school. And I said, okay, as a classroom teacher, that's a little bit difficult. And believe me, I have been pulled out of my classroom to, do, to, to translate, to interpret for parents who have situations where students might be threatening suicide and situations like that. And I don't think it's right. I don't mind doing the, the, the occasional translation of a document. I can do that. I'm a professional. But I think that as, a, as an institution, as a public institution, we need to fulfill that need. I, I spent two hours of my time today making phone calls. You know what? And I remember because when I worked at the university, before coming to Eureka High, I used to make calls to prospective students. And I, you know what? I actually like it. But we should have someone whose job that is. We should have somebody at the school. We should have the parents should feel welcome and should not have the fear of, of coming to the school because there's no one to talk with them. Where are the Hispanic parents or the Spanish-speaking parents at the school? I see one parent here who, who is a Spanish-speaker parent. Are they welcome? I hope that we, I hope that we find it in our budget funds to bring somebody to the high school that every school has a person whose job is to communicate with parents at, at the drop of a hat, basically, because it's very, very important. And I th it's an issue that is very, very dear to my heart, very personal. Thank you very much. Rafael Rivera is my name. I would like to ask the board if we could get at least three minutes to speak uh, for my school. I was just working, and I got here, and I didn't have time to fill up the paper. To okay, if you'll it. come to the podium, then you'll have three minutes. All right. Good evening, members of the board. I come here humbly and respectfully to, first of all, agree with Mr. Raphael, Raphael what he said. We really do need somebody, not only at the high school. We need at every single school. We need somebody who would translate. It would be very, very nice because the Hispanic community is growing. And if you will have that in consideration, please, I would ask maybe to try to hire somebody for every school, even if they have to do something else like they do at the hospital. Sometimes in the hospital, they have people working, but they, when somebody comes, they pull them off and they do that. And another thing, I would like to speak on behalf uh, of our principal. I am a monitor at uh, Alice Burney, and I work there every single day since I started, I think, uh, 2005. Um, I sadly heard that uh, they try to change our principal, and I know I've been reading in the paper what, what they explain, how is this situation going, that was only temporarily, that when, Ms. when she stepped up, the people will get back. But um, I wanted to say about uh, the children. The children are probably not the parents, probably not the workers are going to that be damaged from this, but the students. And my goal as I've been working in Eureka High School, it's 
the students. If I, if for some reason I'd like to leave my job, I would be on behalf of them. And Miss P has done a tremendous job at school. First of all, and I admire her because she's even trying to learn Spanish, which I really, really <laughs> admire that. And um, this, the parents are get we get we I don't know how we get spoiled we get used to somebody and it's not you know we see them every day like a family, but the childrens are having a new principal having changed everything so we're gonna go backward instead of getting forward. So and I also hear some parents talking about the other principal they love them at their school, and we love our principal of our school. So if I humbly ask you to reconsider and think about it and be ways to maybe work this one out somehow that the, the children will not be upset about this. Because when the children are upset, everything just goes backward. And, and I will really, we're all parents, we're all working for the same goals. Our students from little to the sixth grade, they are our main goal. For anything we do, we have this right now, it's for them. So would you please, I don't know how you, I know you're very intelligent, so uh, maybe work some things in there that we, it could um, work. And I know you probably have some benefits or some thing that you're thinking about it, but please, if they could remain for the time as two years maybe for Miss P, it would really, really benefit the students. And the parents got so used to her, the teachers I got used to them. It's not just like friendly way, but student, consistency, and academically. Please reconsider that and think about, I don't know, maybe shuffle something for higher grades instead of elementary. Would you please reconsider that? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. Any questions, comments, wanting anything bold? I'd like to move for approval of the consent calendar. Second. There's been a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. Any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 None opposed. Consent calendar is approved. Discussion action item, third interim financial report. Thank you. Hey, Lori, could you turn the thingy on there? Thank you. This is working. Mine's working. <clears throat> Hello. I just tried working a couple, hour, a couple hours ago. <laughs> a little bit ago when you could hear that one come on. So these are working? Mine is. Is this working? Hello? Hello? Yeah, Testing yeah. one, two, three. I don't is think it's No, yours is working. Oh, it is. Okay. Only Paul's oh, isn't. Oh. Yes, yes. Okay, there we go. Are you there, Paul? It's not up very well. Hello? Hello? Hey, Hello. yours is there on. There we go. Anyway. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> He was texting me to tell me oh, he couldn't get through. Uh -huh. <coughs> okay. Yeah, we're waiting. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, so here we are for our, our third interim report, and uh, this report is uh, necessitated by us uh, having a qualified certification with our second interim report. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one. Uh, for the most part, things have remained relatively stable from our second interim report to our third interim report. Um, so the third interim is a snapshot of the district's uh, fiscal situation as of April 30th. There are no, no multi-year projections that go along with it. Um, so it is just the 11-12 um, projection which will um, show us our budget as we hope to see it as we come up to, um, to year end 2011-12. Um, I'm going to use this mostly just to kind of show where we are on the pages, but uh, with the information that I handed out to you, oh. That you didn't hand out to us? <laughs> Thank you, Hank. Christmas. <laughs> 
that went out that way too, thank you. It's a well-oiled machine. Anyway, um, so as the information is coming around, um, I'll give just a, a little bit more backdrop. Um, as we look through things, we still have approximately a $2 million structural deficit. I'm saying approximate because we haven't brought that down to uh, the actual dollar figure, um, dollar for dollar, but uh, we remain in that general area. Um, also, the other thing that I'll point out is we, before we get into the rest of the things, you may have just seen the state's announcement of its revenue shortfalls. We're now projecting about a $16 billion revenue shortfall for 2011-12, and I just hope that our projections are a little bit closer than theirs at this point. Um, the first page of what's been handed out to you is the, um, the general fund comparison, and basically goes from the budget adoption at the start of the year through first, second, and third interims. The gray column shows you the difference between second and third interim, the, the changes that we've seen between those two periods. I'll just go very briefly to the bottom of the page, and you can see on a combined basis this is both restricted and unrestricted revenues, um, excuse me, unrestricted resources, that we've seen a change in our ending fund balance of about $160,000. Um, always nice to see it go in, the, in a positive direction. Um, $160,000, though, in terms of a, uh, our overall budget is, is not a, a major, major movement. So I think we're pretty pleased with the fact that um, we are, we've remained fairly static as we move from second to third interim. So I will spend a little bit more time on just a few items. Um, flipping to page two, this is the unrestricted portion of our general fund. And the first thing I'd like to point out is the first line that's there. Uh, the revenue limit sources, you see that we dropped about 198000 from second interim to third interim. And that is really uh, a function of the way that the state reconfigured the revenues that we receive. Put differently, um, we're going to see on the restricted revenues that our transportation revenue increased, but there was all, an almost equal offset um, with our uh, revenue limit funding that went in the opposite direction. We actually came out about $15,000 ahead in that exchange, but as we look at just our unrestricted resources, we see that $198,000 decrease. Um, another item I'll point out is under other local sources, this is a, a revenue line, down about $75,000. That's a result of a, a revenue that, um, that we booked incorrectly. It actually should have been a receivable that was um, reversed out. We put it in as a revenue early on, um, caught that number and have made the appropriate correction. So that accounts for the difference between second and third interim. If you look at the expense categories, you'll see some are up 50000 or so, some are, are down that, that similar amount, but for the most part, they've remained relatively stable from reporting period to reporting period. So I won't spend a lot of time going in over anything there, unless you have any specific questions on them. But I will take you down to the contributions line. And uh, we've seen that we've actually um, decreased our contributions, that is, moving dollars out of our um, unrestricted funds and funding other uh, resources. Um, and those happen to be uh, transportation was one of them. We were able to reduce our transportation contribution by about $208,000 because we received additional revenue that we had lost at the second interim portion. Uh, our maintenance contribution is down about 139000 and our contribution to special education was down about 27000 So those three items together um, come together to show that decrease of uh, $375,000 to the other resources. Um, a, a lot of the work, for instance, in special ed, you, uh, we keep on talking about how much we're continuing to spend there, and we are. We'll see some of that on the, the, um, the restricted side. Uh, but we've continued through second interim to third interim to look at vacancies and positions to try to fine tune that. So um, as we move from third interim into our unaudited actuals for 2011-12, hopefully what we'll see that is that those numbers will remain fairly stagnant and um, we'll have a, a, a good uh, consistent number to be able to report to you. On a bottom line basis for our unrestricted resources, we increased our ending fund balance um, from period to period by about $180,000. Again, not, uh, not a major movement, but it's nice to see it at least in a positive, to direct, a positive direction. Uh, the last of, of the, the first three that I want to direct your attention to is the restricted resources. 
and um, on a bottom line basis, we only moved about 18,000 overall, but there are a few different line items that I do want to point out. Um, we had about a $79,000 increase in our federal revenues. That is uh, the, the function of booking the last portion of the Workforce Investment Act revenues. So um, from period to period, that went up about $80,000. Um, the other state sources, again, here's one of the offsets. This is the pupil transportation piece. So we lost it in the unrestricted resources with the revenue limit. We pick it back up in transportation. Um, and then one last one to, to point out is the, um, the capital outlay down about 131000 from the prior period. And that is a function of taking some of the earthquake expenses, um, the expenditures that we had used to do some of the, um, the upgrade and, and construction there um, in the, uh, the, the library and the like. We moved it out of the general fund and applied those dollars against the bond fund. So that's just a, a simple shifting of, of dollars out of general fund into another fund category. And again, I bring it down to that bottom line that shows we decreased about $18,000 on our restricted ending fund balance. Um, that all netting out to about $180,000, excuse me, $160,000 is what we um, were able to gain overall between um, second and third interim. The last spreadsheet I wanted to show you very quickly, and we've seen this from prior periods as well, but again takes us the, the overall ending fund balances um, of each of the funds within the organization and shows from audited, unaudited actuals, first interim, second interim, and third interim. Um, the first line there kind of reflects what we just talked about. There's a $179,000 increase in our ending fund balance for unrestricted, $18,000 $18, decrease in unrestricted brings us to about $160,000 um, increase to our, our general fund there. Um, I'll go through these very quickly, anything that has changes or, or the, the highlights, if you will. Adult education, what we're anticipating is a little bit of an ending fund balance there um, that we hadn't anticipated earlier in the year. Um, just means, I think, a little bit less spending that it, than we had expected beforehand. The change in the special reserve down $10,000 is a reflection of our projection for um, interest income. Um, we'd had 20000 projected previously. We make about 0.85% on the funds that we keep right now, a princely sum. Um, so we were able to, uh, to change that projection. And then the, the other one that I think is a, a significant one to talk about is the secondary bond. Um, we had at second interim uh, projected having about $200,000 left at the end of the year. At this point, it looks like the, um, the, uh, the bond fund will be completely spent, and um, we will have used up that particular resource. So on whole, um, as we look at the, the bottom line, as you look across all of our ending fund balances, we've had just an $18,000 net change there. So again, I think a fairly consistent report from period to period. And it's better to be lucky than good sometimes. Um, so that's, that's it in a nutshell, um, the things that we've covered here. Um, and I would open it for any questions. I just want to say thanks for this last column that you added in gray, because that makes it much easier for me to compare. Mm -hmm. And the numbers are right there, why there's a difference. And then you can, I, I appreciate that column. Great, thank you. I just had a question on the um, binder that you gave us. Just it's probably I just don't understand. But on the um, on the working version from working budget, the the mat last page, the big spreadsheet. One. Oh yeah, all funds. Mm -hmm. On the bottom where it says the general fund designated for economic uncertainty, and then the special reserve fund, and then on the projected budget, the special reserve fund is at zero. What is that being spent on? Um, I actually think that they just missed that number in there because okay. that number should be in there. And, and I'm, I'm looking at the, um, uh, the budgeted reserve level of, of 8.16, which right. remains the same from right. time to time. Right. So um, sorry, I missed that one. Oh, okay. uh, this this uh, comes from the county, and I, I didn't see that second page. So, But that number that should number not have changed from period okay. to period or from sheet to sheet. Yeah. Good catch. 
one last thing if I could, sorry, and, and it's, it's on the last page and it's our cash position. Our cash position has changed um, just a, a, a bit from where we were at second interim, um, about $170,000 decrease in our overall cash position from time to time. Um, Again, we don't like to go that direction, but that's just really a, a timing function. It means that expenditures that we had expected to occur a little bit later out um, are happening a little bit earlier, but it should even itself out by the end of the year. And what page did you say that the cash position was on? It's in the binder. Oh, it's in, it's oh, a, I'm sorry, it's in the binder. It's, it's the last page there. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll move to item. So, uh, and do we, need uh, we that does need uh, we do need to have that accepted by the board, if you would. I make a motion that we accept the third interim report. I'll second it. Motion in a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed. It is accepted. Item L23, Curriculum Adoption, High School English, Writing That Works. Item L23 is uh, a request to adopt a new textbook for writing class at Eureka High School. And this was presented to the Curriculum Committee and met with approval. And here tonight to make a brief presentation and to answer any of your questions is Mr. Phil Middlemas. Hello, you've seen me before. <laughs> Wearing another hat. Uh, so this is uh, writing that works. Uh, what we're doing is uh, we're trying to reestablish the uh, writing for the workplace um, with our students for a non-college prep course. Uh, what I would like to do, and Mr. Fullerton, you could help me with this, knowing that you're in the Rotary, uh, is invite me over for lunch sometime to address everyone and I'd love to talk to the group of business people and find out exactly what they would like to find or require their young graduates from Eureka High in terms of the writing abilities. Um, the book's not going to do it all, but this is a good book. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a college uh, text actually and uh, if you go online, uh, particularly at uh, Amazon.com, you'll uh, you'll find that it's um, it's one of the highest prized resource books. So this is the one of all of those expensive books that the college people buy. This is the one that they keep uh, because it's uh, it's something that you want to come back to again and again and again. And hopefully that won't result in these books disappearing at the end of the year. But that's a chance we're going to have to take. Now, it's an expensive book, uh, about $75, I believe, mo maximum. Uh, brand new. I've seen it as high as 120 wow. in some places. But uh, used books are around $30, $35. Um, I understand we're going to have two classes. There'll be one at this school and one at Zoe Barnum. So this will be purchased in uh, tandem. Uh, you saw the little report that I wrote up there. Um, it's uh Did we ever buy you books? It's the tenth edition. We do? We can. But we have we ever? Not I don't remember our ever having bought used books. Question for you, Mr. Middlemas. Mm -hmm. uh, it says it has digital access. Does that mean like for the nook or whatever electronic reader? Is, uh, no, it's not. Level? It's not a text online. It's uh, the um, the assignments and support um, units, things like that. Variation on the units. Uh, it's pretty thorough. Uh, Are we looking at anything that would be available on electronic uh, reader basis? Are we exploring that option for? I haven't. I can explore that. But in terms of this book, I don't believe there's an e-book of it. Otherwise, I think it would have specified that Amazon would be more than eager to sell us that also. 
but again, you know, a lot of the students who are probably going to be taking the class, as soon as one doesn't have a computer at home, it puts them at a disadvantage. Now, I would be teaching this in my lab, my media lab, so there would be 20 available computers for the students to go on and to take some of the tests, uh, test themselves and things like that. At home, it may be a different situation. For example, I had a student today uh, who is in my drama is lit, and um, I'm not printing up my next film script, which because uh, <clears throat> I had it, because I'm saving paper because of a situation that we have at Eureka High School now is we don't we don't have someone who can do all the printing, and uh, it's just a lot of paper when I'm printing out uh, 24 or five copies of of a hundred and you know twenty page script. So as an e-book, this student is obviously or a script, because the scripts are online. There's almost every script that I know of uh, that has been around for at least two years is online, but she can't read it. And I said, well, we'll work something out. So with one student I can manage it. But if I have more than, you know, five students in the class, they're going to be at a great disadvantage in terms of trying to do the homework without having a text. So I can look. I have no problem with that. This class isn't going to be taught until the springtime, so we have uh, uh, some time to prepare for it. I'm just becoming more aware of the whole ebook availability and the students that already have them, if they could download the text at a reduced rate. Uh, uh, that'll be easy to find out. I'll just check it tomorrow. It would be. And I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. But it's a good idea. We haven't explored that yet because uh, the the disadvantage for some of the students that Mr. Middlemas that Mr. Middlemas points out um, that it would create some inequities in the classroom and student access to the material, um, but we're aware that that is something on the horizon, so something to be alert to, something to be aware of. We just completed our uh, district technology plan which has been reviewed by um, the regional uh, uh, network and uh, it is being reviewed by the state after it comes back with state comments. I'll be presenting that to the school board. Um, but this is not one of the areas where our technology plan committee has chosen to go. Uh, we have some uh, greater needs in our district for upgrading our computers. So at this time, that's not a major uh, Initiative, but it, like I said, it's something that we will be tracking and keeping aware of. I'll talk to the Rotary President and Secretary about setting up some kind of meeting. Yeah, I'd appreciate it. I think that would be a great experience, not just for me, but I'll give everyone a test. <laughs> I can show them what, uh, have them decipher what the students would write in a comfort zone with their. You know, U, Y, O, U for U for Y, O, U. Uh, and the texting language, which is permeating, you know, the, uh, the written expression. Uh, and I can imagine it just absolutely turning off anyone uh, who's going to try to hire someone who they, they hope can, can uh, write something down right. verbatim or otherwise. Okay. Okay? Great. Thank you. Bring it back for approval. Consent. L24, Textbook Adoption, Algebra 2, Common Core. This item is uh, will be presented by uh, Russ Turpin, Matt Muldoon. They made a presentation to the Curriculum Committee recently. The Curriculum Committee approved the adoption, recommending it to the school board. And these gentlemen will make a brief presentation and answer any of your questions. Thank you. So, um, my name is Russ Turpin, and um, I'm co-chair of math department, Matt Muldoon. Um, we uh, began the adoption process in the, in the math department actually three years ago when we decided to or change our um, our tact, so to speak, on, the, on our math department and go from two platforms down to one. Uh, we were running a CPM and a 
we called it traditional um, math program, and they were concurrent. They were staying with each other, and they ended up at the same spot, but there are two roads to the same spot. And it was un got unwieldy, unwieldy? unwieldy. Um, with the population going down a little bit. And, um, and we started about three years ago moving the freshmen uh, that was one class down to one text and last year we adopted a geometry book so we're at one text there and now this year we'd like to for next year to go down to one um, algebra two book and there's several good reasons for getting a new book uh, our old book is 22 years old I think um, I'm a little bit afraid that at some point some kid's going to look in his book and see his parents' name in there. <laughs> um, um, the, the, you know, we have, we've had those books a long time, and, and the, the materials that come with the new books now are incredible compared to what we used to have. Um, the process we used to pick a new book, we, um, we went through and I ordered as many as I could find. And we looked at the ones that were aligned with the new Common Core curriculum, and there were four different publishers or different books actually that that met those conditions. And we we went through the process of, of looking at them. Um, Matt, Matt, myself, Dana Clower, and Ryan Keller all evaluated them. And the one we um, we liked the best and thought did the best job was the same publisher and and basically a continuation of the book we adopted last year in geometry. Um, the, it's really cool looking, which I'm sure <laughs> helps, but um, actually it doesn't. Um, <laughs> but um, the, the book is um, very strong, we think. Um, it, we are very happy with the geometry book we adopted last year, which has the same format and the same um, tech, technology yeah, online resources, that's what I want. Um, the book is completely readable online. That's part of the package. When you buy the book, you, you get, the student gets access to the book. So they don't have to take it home. Um, okay. If they can, I can't do it off the screen, but I guess they can. Um, but uh, they, there's just, there's, there's tremendous number of, of options for them and for us teachers for resources um, and it's uh, a new world in algebra 2 um, as far as um, you know a number of copies we're looking at we're looking at over 200 and plus some at Zoe I suppose um, it's not an inexpensive venture um, but it's been a long time it's been a long time and I think uh, we're going to need to order next year anyway and finding the existing algebra 2 book used is even I mean it's ex it's expensive as expensive to buy the used ones as it is to buy these new. Um, so I think we have a lot of good arguments for moving on. Do you guys have any questions? This says the approximate cost for each student is eighty four dollars, and that includes the digital. Which, as the parent of a freshman who has hefted his backpack into the van, I appreciate that it has digital access. No excuse. Well, there is an excuse. My computer doesn't work. <laughs> that's not bad for a book. No, that's no. good price wise. Not They're really up there. Yeah. Bring it back to consent. 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 All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Russ. And that, uh, the materials will be on display for at least two weeks no. and uh, through the next board meeting. <coughs> Item L25, Board Policy, Admin Reg 6145.2, Athletic Competition. This board policy is brought to you as, as part of the, the regular process for updating our policies. And this one in particular was selected because there is a section and only one section in it that is new. We have a, a current policy that um, puts all of these provisions, policies, and regulations in force. Uh, but the new piece is uh, the new law that requires sending home to parents notification of uh, the possibility of concussion if they participate in uh, contact sports. So I 
talked with uh, Dwayne Peterson and confirmed with Dwayne that current practice is uh, expressed throughout uh, with a couple of exceptions on the bottom of page 57. Um, this is an optional paragraph that would ask the district representative to the CIF to report on a regular basis to the board. This is not currently done, but it would be acceptable if the board likes would like to hear a report on a regular basis. What's a regular basis? Could be twice a year or once a year. Okay. I would like that. To have that report. We'll leave that in. Uh, let's move over to page 60. In the middle of page 60, it requires that all athletic equipment is cleaned and inspected for safety before the beginning of each school year. And it was confirmed for me that this is uh, regularly done for football. Yes, that is on page 60. That's just done for football? It, it is done for football, yes. That um, current practice. Is what, it, is, are there other sports that it needs to be done? What I can say is, is if a new regulation comes across the table, we then address it in that sport. In particular, for example, baseball, we had to switch out the bats because of a new ruling, and so we did that immediately. So it's not that we don't pay attention to it, but football does have the, the primary focus in terms of... And this policy going. says all athletic equipment. Right. So mm -hmm. it's included in the policy. Anything else? The, uh, on page 67 mm. is the new section. Under health and safety, AB 25 added Education Code 49475 to require districts to distribute information on concussion and head injuries to student athletes and their parents' guardians. The district may use fact sheets developed and, and so forth, and you can read that. Um, so we have a, a draft of, of something that, of, again, this is something that I've discussed with Dwayne Peterson and these are still in process but we wanted to share with the school board the kind of a thing that is available online through Centers for Disease Control these are just samples but we would be developing something for Eureka City Schools and sending this home with parents there's a fact sheet for student athletes fact sheet for coaches and a fact sheet for parents. Mm -hmm. Good idea. A couple of other things I'd like to point out to you. On page 68, parent notifications. This is an optional section, and I would uh, recommend that we delete number one because we already send this notice with our annual uniform complaint procedure notice. And so it would be redundant to have this in this policy. So I'm just recommending that we not include it. It's an optional piece. Item number one there on page 68. It says contains information. That one? Yeah. No. Here on 68, right here. Right Following is optional and that will flow. Oh, okay. We don't need that. Item number two is mandatory, and there is such a thing that uh, there is an athlete's bill of rights, and it is mandatory that we post that on our district website. Okay. And the rest of this uh, is it expresses current practice. Okay. Can we go back to page 68 for a second? I'm sorry. You're proposing we take out the section that says the superintendent or designee shall notify the students, par students, parents, or guardian of the date, time, and extent of any injury. You're saying that's covered where else? No, uh, under parent notifications. Oh, thank you. That, make, that, that, that makes more sense. Okay, below that box, item number one. It would be a, a redundant notice because we okay. already give parents that notice of the right to. File I thought a you said the first. Complaint optional paragraph. You mean you said the second. Yeah. Thank you. 
which 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 is contains information about the right. procedures. That's what I asked, yes. and he told me I was in the wrong. Well, okay, that's what we don't want anymore. Thank you. Any other questions? Consent. So before we move into closed session, um, are there any public comments on closed session items? We'll be discussing items C1, uh, possibly discussing items C1, C2, and C3. Hearing none, we'll um, close to, we'll adjourn to closed session. So were you told you couldn't let your children play? Yeah, gave me a ticket to boot. I don't know what. I've 